Hello everyone, welcome to Ian's Bricks. I'm Ian. Here is my A to Z uh, of Lego investing. A. Availability. With all Lego sets, the best thing to do is to try and find sets that not only are popular, um, but, but maybe aren't that uh, easily available. So maybe store exclusives, things like that. Uh, the reason for that, so sets that are popular but maybe not so readily available uh, they will do well for Lego reinvesting or Lego investing simply because not that many people have been able to get hold of them. B. Buying. When buying Lego sets you just need to make sure that you're taking advantage of all discounts and deals that you can find available. Uh, one thing I would suggest with any uh, Lego investing sets that you uh, decide to to buy is to maybe not buy them just as they are released and just as they come out um, because uh, the likelihood is they're going to be on the shelves for one, two, three years, maybe even longer. So uh, just be careful that the sets that you're, the, you are buying, maybe try and uh, pick items that are closer to retirement than items that have just come out. C is for costs. And these are costs that you uh, encounter when you're Lego reselling, especially when you're actually selling your items on. So if you're going to be selling your items on eBay, they take a cut or a percentage of the uh, the, uh, the sale price that you sell them for. Um, obviously, if you're selling at a, a Lego fair, like I quite often do, there are costs involved in that. Travel, uh, transport to the actual venue, uh, there's obviously costs of buying the tables when you're actually there. And there are other costs as well, so if you need a card reader, for example, there's costs there. Um, and uh, yeah, so just be aware of, of any kind of costs that may be involved of you actually selling on your Lego items. D is for discounts. Uh, there are plenty of discounts to be had uh, on Lego, but you've just got to search and make sure that you know where to look. Um, some good places are obviously online, uh, places like Amazon for example, they have discounts all the time. Um, but also be aware of other retailers, either uh, physical retailers or online retailers. They have uh, sort of different offers at different times of the year, so just sort of keep an eye out uh, for uh, when particular sets that you're interested in are um, at a discounted rate, because it will happen. E is for errors. Uh, from time to time you will make errors and there will things that go uh, go wrong for you in Lego investing. Don't worry too much about that, it's just one of those things that you ha that happen. It may be that you sell something uh, and actually it's probably worth more than you've sold it for, say like a, on an eBay fixed price for example, um, or you could maybe buy a set that you thought would do really really well and that set either doesn't retire for a long long time um, or that is just not popular after retirement. Don't worry too much about that, it does happen but try not to make too much of a habit of this. F is for fraud. Uh, be very, very careful, especially if you're selling on places like uh, eBay or Facebook Marketplace. There are people out there, unfortunately, that will try and uh, take, take items, say they've not had them, try and get money back so be very very wary about that thing happening as well and also if you're sort of buying Lego and maybe not buying it from um, a reputable store things like that if you're a mate of yours oh I've got 10 of these Lego sets for you to buy um, just be careful where they came from because you could land yourself in a bit of hot water uh, in case you're sort of maybe even dealing stolen goods because there is a little there are a few people out there unfortunately that will um, steal Lego sets and try and sell them on to other people as well. G is for gift with purchase. Uh, this is mainly for people that buy from lego.com or from Lego stores. Always be aware of the free Lego gift with purchases that are available and that includes things like VIP points, double VIP points as well. Um, I found, especially selling Lego fairs, that some of the uh, Lego gift with purchase that you can get can be really, really popular and you're sort of getting them for free by spending over a certain amount. But actually they're kind of, they're worth a decent amount of money. There have been some really, really good ones this year in 2020. Uh, so yeah, keep an eye out for those gift with purchases, free gifts, because uh, they're always worth uh, getting getting. H is for how to sell. Uh, when you first start Lego investing, you need to decide how you're going to sell your Lego sets. The easiest part of them is buying Lego sets, but you've got to think, how am I going to sell these? Are you going to use Facebook Marketplace? Are you going to use eBay? Do you have your own website? Are you going to sell at Lego Fair? So there's a lot of, uh, lot of ways that you can sell Lego, but you sort of need to decide really how you are going to approach this, uh, because when you get to the point that you want to sell your Lego, you're going to need to be prepared for that. That. I is for inventory. 
Uh, you're going to need to make sure that you keep a list of all the Lego sets that you buy and preferably how much you pay for them because when you come to selling those sets, if it's a year, two years, maybe even three years down the line, you might not be able to rem remember the price that you actually paid for an item. Obviously there are, are um, different websites uh, like uh, Brickset which have lists of dates of when uh, Lego sets are available, when they when they came on the market, when they uh, came off the market and how much the recommended retail price is but you may have bought your Lego items for a cheaper price so always keep a list of all the items that you buy and sell as well so you've got a record of everything that you have. J is for junk. Now unfortunately there are some what I would consider junk Lego sets out there. There are certain themes that I don't particularly like investing in. Uh, one great example is maybe uh, the Lego video range which has been basically a complete flop. Uh, even things like dots for example they're not particularly popular and probably won't do that well for Lego investing. So just keep an eye out for maybe junk sets and even some of the other lines as well. So for example recently there was the um, Marvel Eternals um, wave of Lego sets. Uh, the film wasn't particularly uh, well received. Uh, a lot of the sets weren't very good. Uh, uh, so again, just sort of keep an eye out for maybe junk sets. That, yes, Le Lego is always good to invest in, but there e even with Lego, there are certain sets out there which just aren't worth investing in, and I consider them to be junk. K is for knowledge. Uh, before you even start or think about Lego investing, you need to have a knowledge of the whole, how the whole thing works really. You need to have a bit of a knowledge of Lego, um, what sets do well, what sets don't do well. Uh, go on the internet, have a look at Facebook forums, Discord channels, things like that. There are plenty of places where you can go, you can get ideas, uh, you can sort of read previous comments from Facebook groups and there's plenty of information out there. People won't tell you what sets to buy and, and this, that and the other. You need to work that out for yourself but you need to have a good knowledge of what you're doing with Lego investing in before you get into it. If you just get into it because you think, oh okay, I can make a quick book here, I'll buy that set, sell it on, the chances are you probably won't do very well. You've got to have a knowledge about what sets to buy, when to buy them, how to buy them and, and how to sell them as well. So yeah, do, do use those kind of tools online uh, to get that knowledge that you'll need to be a good Lego investor. L is for licensed themes. There are plenty of licensed themes out there. Um, Star Wars, Harry Potter, for example, they're two really, really um, good sort of licensed themes that do well on a regular basis. Not all Star Wars and Harry Potter sets will be great for Lego investing. Some of them may be too too large, or maybe not particularly popular, or there may just be sets that uh, so have been. You know, so many people out there have been um, Lego invested in those particular sets and things get over hoarded. So it's not always a, a giver, but generally you will tend to find with Lego, if a Lego is linked to a license theme, a good license theme, then it should do well. There are exceptions to that. Um, for example, I just mentioned before the Eternals theme, that's not been particularly well received. And even the new uh, Avatar um, um, sets that have come out recently, uh, again, there's not a lot of people sort of talking about. About those I don't think they've been particularly well received so it's it's not always a you know a, a giver that any particular license theme will do well but it uh, you know generally generally sort of you know nine times out of ten if a set is a license set from a good license uh, then they should do okay M is for minifigures. There are plenty of minifigures uh, in Lego. You can buy individual minifigures uh, and you can buy, obviously there are minifigures that come with sets as well. Always keep an eye out for um, especially sets which have unique or rare minifigures. So for example in the Star Wars world there are plenty of sets that come with uh, a particular minifigure from a particular um, film or, or a TV show that uh, isn't in any other set. So keep an eye out for those sets with rare minifigures in because the chances are if the set has got one of those figures in the value of the set as a whole will do better than something which has got lots of generic minifigures in there. N is for new. Uh, two things to say about new. Uh, firstly, be very, very careful, as I mentioned before, about buying sets just as they are released, brand new sets. It's always very, very tempting to see a, the fantastic latest new Lego set that's been produced, and you think, wow, that's fantastic, that'll do amazing for investment, and you buy loads of them, and then they're on the shelves for three or four years, and you're basically, that you're stuck with those items until you can sell, sell them on for, sort of, for later on. 
Also, if you are buying sets, make sure that the condition of the sets that you buy is like it's a new product. It can be difficult sometimes if you're ordering things online. Things do get bashed around. Uh, there are, you know, some retails that are better than others that actually um, uh, pack in, post and pack in their items. Um, but a lot of the times, if you, I mean, for me, for example, I always find that Amazon in the UK is very good. Lego.com is very good. Smith's Toys, for example, they're pretty good as well. So, you know, use those retailers that have got a good reputation for um, for sending sets out that are well post and packaged. And then when that item comes, it's basically as new. All the seals are intact. The box isn't creased or damaged. So that when you sell that set on, whether it's a year down the line, five years down the line that set will still look as though it's brand new and that's the ultimate goal uh, the, the, the better the set the better the quality of the set when you sell it on the, the more chance you have of getting more money for that set O is for other investors. Uh, now, obviously there are other investors out there, so be very, very wary of that. There are plenty of chats and forums online. Uh, people will discuss what sets they're buying. Uh, so just be aware that uh, just because one person says, yes, buy this set, uh, it might not be the best advice in the world. So, uh, and also if you are buying a lot of one particular style of set, if a lot of other people are also buying that set as well, then it may take a longer period of time and until those sets get to a point uh, where you're actually able to sell them for a reasonable amount of profit. So just be aware there are a lot of other people out there uh, that are selling on eBay or Lego fairs or wherever it is that they sell. So you're not going to be the only one doing this, uh, which is maybe not a bad thing because you can ask advice from other people, but it does also mean that there are other people doing this and uh, there will be other people with the same sets that you have and you own and want to sell at a later date. P is for planning. Always plan ahead. You've got to plan about how much money you can afford to spend on Lego. Um, you're going to have to plan what sets you want to buy, when you're going to buy them. Keep an eye out for retirement dates, uh, for when sets are going to retire, because you don't want to be hanging on to sets for too long. Um, and you also need to plan things like how you're going to store items, where you're going to keep them, how you're going to sell them. So the whole process of Lego investing, you've got to plan. If you don't plan, then there will be errors that you make and the chances are you probably won't do as well uh, as if someone was you know constantly planning about you know what to buy when to buy it how much money they have to spend um, and also that goes for don't overspend as well you know sometimes there are some great deals out there but if you just don't have that money to invest in that particular set I would suggest probably not buying it because yeah you could put it on your credit card but then if you can't pay that credit card off the following month that'll cost you in fees and, and then you just starts to spiral so um, always plan ahead make sure that you know how much you can spend on Lego in any particular month uh, and that way uh, you should do fairly well. Q is for quick flips. Uh, this is a term that I actually really don't like and I know a lot of people do this but this is basically when people so a new set comes out uh, people think it will do quite well. Say, for example, the Back to the Future uh, DeLorean that was released earlier this year. Uh, that was a very popular set. The people bought it up. It went sold out on Lego. And there were people that were able to sell those sets on uh, for an inflated price uh, before the, the stock came back into Lego.com. Uh, the risk that you have with that is you don't know how many of these sets Lego has produced. Uh, and quite a lot of the time, because you're buying new Lego sets, if you aren't able to uh, quick flip them as it were, sell them sort of straight away for a profit, uh, then the chances are that you might be hanging on to that set for quite a while. And also with uh, with quick flips, um, for me personally, it's, it's something that I don't do because I think the profit that you get, even if you were to sell a set for maybe 20, 30% over their uh, retail price um, because it's sort of sold out on Lego or, or wherever else, uh, the chances are that once you factor in eBay fees and other fees and costs, you're not going to be making an awful lot of money from a particular set. Now, I know people do this and they, they like to do this and people talk about it all the time, but for me, I'm not a fan. It's something that I don't particularly do. Uh, so just be aware that is there's something people that do, but for me, it's not something that uh, I like to partake in. R is for rarities. There will be Lego sets from time to time that have limited availability, limited releases, short shelf life. Uh, they're the kind of sets that you need to be looking for uh, for Lego investing. Uh, you want to get, uh, you want to have 
uh, as many sets as you can that maybe other people don't have or that other people weren't able to get at the time. There may be reasons for this. So, for example, when I went to uh, Denmark earlier this year, um, I got some of the uh, Lego house sets, which just aren't available anywhere else apart from at the Lego house in Denmark. I uh, bought them all the way back in my car. Uh, so for me, those sets are interesting because they're, they're rare, they're very difficult to get hold of, and so there hopefully should be something that people would want, want to get in future. So always be on the lookout for those rare sets because uh, sometimes they can be really, really uh, very, very good for a Lego investor. S is for storage. One thing you must make sure when you start your Lego investing journey is that you have to have a decent place to store your Lego sets. Uh, you will soon find that if you start, it's the easy bit is buying Lego, uh, but the problem is, is you'll find after a while that you need somewhere to store it. Now, um, depending where you live in the world, um, your attic or your garage might not be the best place to store it because of heat, humidity, hot, cold, lots of temperature variations. Um, I'm quite lucky in the UK um, that we don't have sort of great temperature extremes here in the UK, no great humidity, um, so uh, it tends to be a lot easier to sell stuff. But, but even then, you need to make sure that you have space in your house or, or wherever you live because uh, it can soon be quickly become a problem if you then start to run out of space uh, and you've got nowhere to store these Lego sets. Now you can pay for storage, which is fine, plenty of storage units around the world, but again, that's going to cost you more money. So are you willing to pay out for these storage units? Is the amount of money that you're going to be making um, from your Lego investing going to cover the cost of these storage units? Uh, so yeah, always make sure that, yes, it sounds like an easy thing to do sometime, buy some Lego, sell it on, but you might be storing those items for one, two, three even more years so just make sure that you have enough space to um, to hold all of the Lego that you sort of intend to buy. T is for trends uh, make sure that you uh, look out for different trends and different things that may or may not be popular. Um, there are things um, that will always be popular, for example, like Star Wars or some of the Harry Potter sets. They're always popular, but there can be other trends as well, other things. There might be a new movie out uh, which might spark interest in, um, in sets. An example of this is uh, the Stranger Things Upside Down, Down House. It was retired at the end of 2021. I've been on the shelves for a couple of years. Uh, and then they released uh, series four of Stranger Things. It was an absolute massive hit on Netflix, absolutely huge. And then that just made the, the sets of the retired uh, Upside Down House. They just went through the roof. So keep an eye out for things like that in the future. Um, there are things that maybe you think will, will be trending quite well and may not do quite well. So you've always got to be wary about that. Trends do come and go, so be very, very careful. But just sort of be aware of different trends because that might might sort of link into your Lego investing and, and may, may sort of spur you on to buy other certain sets, other sorts of sets that you maybe wouldn't have bought um, if that set wasn't particularly, uh, or that theme wasn't particularly popular. U is for undamaged. Uh, I've already talked about this, but it's always really, really important to try and pick up Lego sets which have got, uh, where the boxes have got no damage at all. And this even goes for picking items off the shelf in Lego stores or other stores or supermarkets. Always have a look at, at the box, make sure it's okay, make sure there's no rips or tears or, or seals gone, um, because, you know, your ultimate aim is to keep the item as pristine and as new looking and as undamaged as possible. Uh, so that when you come to sell that item on, that the person that's buying it will look at the set and say, yeah, I want that because that looks that looks perfect. That looks, that's undamaged, got no damage on it, and I want to buy that because it's been well looked after. V is for variety. Uh, one thing I would suggest when you're Lego investing to, is to have a variety of sets. Now, you don't have to buy all the Lego sets from all the different themes. I don't think anyone is able to do that. There are so many themes and Lego sets out there these days that it's probably impossible. But certainly I would suggest having a variety. Um, so even if you do like, for example, Star Wars sets, uh, that's great, buy lots of Star Wars sets, but maybe don't just buy Star Wars sets. There are other sets out there, uh, maybe Harry Potter, maybe maybe modular buildings, 
uh, maybe some of the idea sets that are out there. So um, maybe maybe have a variety of different sets. I mean, there are always themes that people don't like, don't want to invest in. That's absolutely fine. But don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't see one one Lego Star Wars set say, yeah, that'll do great. That's retiring this year. I'm going to buy a hundred of those, and then you don't buy anything else. That would be a big mistake because if that particular set didn't do particularly well or took two or three years to sort of double in price, then you sort of sort of stuck with that. So if you'd have bought like five of one set, five of another set, five of another set, you've got a decent variety there and there's less risk then in when you come to selling the items. There'll be a few sets in there that maybe don't do as well as others, uh, but at least you've got some of the ones that have done well. So always have a decent variety of different themes, different Lego sets, different sizes as well, small, medium, larger sets. Have a good variety and you should do okay. W is for when to sell. Uh, that's the six million dollar question. When do you sell your Lego sets? Um, do you like to wait a year? Do you like to wait two years? When's the premium kind of time? Um, this does vary and will vary of different themes, different Lego sets. Some will go up in value very, very quickly once they've retired. Others will take a long, long time to maybe double in price. So be aware of that. Um, so the general rule of thumb is that two to three years after a Lego set has retired, that it will sort of reach an optimum, le optimum level. Um, sets may still increase after that, but the problem is, is that sets tend to sort of go up in value and then sort of plateau a little bit. So do the things that after after a period of time sets will sort of reach their sort of maximum that they're ever going to reach. So be aware of that. Um, and also there may be different times of year that you sell. People talk about Q4 or quarter four, which is October, November, December, which is the run up to Christmas, which is always a very, very popular um, time to sell Lego in any country. And you'll find a lot quieter times of year. So, so January, February, you're always quite quiet, maybe the middle of the summer as well. So there are the good times to sell, bad times to sell. You could have a set that maybe um, you could sell for like say £100 in, in November of one year and then you get to January, February and that may only be worth, people are only pay, uh, prepared to pay about £80, 80 pounds for that. So the price of an item will fluctuate as well during the year depending on the time of year, depending on how many people want to buy that item as well. X is for X Factor, and I'm not talking about the pop show, the, the singing show, I'm talking about whether a Lego set has got that, that sort of X Factor, that thing that sort of makes it stand out um, from all the other Lego sets. Now, it may just be that you like the set. The chances are if you like a, a set, and particularly, you know, really like a set, that other people will like that set as well. Um, maybe it has special minifigures with it, um, maybe it's uh, just an unusual theme or something that Lego have never done before so to you know keep an eye out for those sets that you you know so you make you sort of think okay that 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 that's a nice set I like that set now I've been wrong about this in the past there have been sets that I've thought yeah that'll do well they're really really great I'll buy some of those and they've been absolute flops but nine times out of ten if you get a set and for whatever reason you're strangely drawn to it you think you know what that's a good set I really like that set that's got the X factor um, the chances are that 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 will probably do well for you uh, for, from a Lego investment point of view why is for you. So you're going to be the person that's going to be doing all of this. Yes, you may have help from your friends and family and, and whatever, but ultimately the, the chances are, if you're watching this video, that it's going to be you that's going to be doing the Lego investing. You're going to be making all the decisions. You're going to be selling the items. Uh, and all I can say to you is just to be prepared. Um, go through all the different things I've gone through on this A to Z list. Uh, hopefully they've uh, given you some sort of ideas of, of how it might, which might help you out. Uh, but ultimately it's going to be down to you to make those decisions. What to buy, when to buy them, how much to spend, when to sell them, how much to sell them for. Um, so just make sure that you're very, very keyed in. You know what you're doing, you know what you're talking about. Uh, and if you're, if you're all keyed up and you've, uh, you've done your research, you should do okay. Z is for zeal. Be passionate, be enthusiastic about Lego. For me, I've always loved Lego. It's something I've always liked since I've been a child. Uh, there were times when I wasn't interested in Lego, but as, as you can sort of tell now, I'm really back into it now. Um, and I don't just buy Lego sets to invest. I build sets as well. You can see some of the sets behind me in my cabinet as well. So I've always been a fan of Lego and still am. Um, I think it would be a mistake to get into Lego investing if you're just in it. You don't know anything about Lego. You're not interested in Lego and think you can make a quick 
quick book. I'm sure there are people out there that do that and maybe they're reasonably successful but I think you need to be have some kind of level of interest in, in Lego and different Lego sets to be able to um, pick out the, the sets which will do well, maybe dismiss the sets that won't do so well at the themes. Um, so you, you need to have that sort of enthusiasm, enthusiasm and zeal about you to be able to I think make this thing work for you um, because if you don't you know it might not be the thing for you. So that's my A to Z. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I certainly enjoyed making it. Thank you very much for watching. Until the next video, we'll see you then. Take care and bye for now.